Hello everyone, I am Jay Paranjpe and I am an undergrad in my third year in the Computer Science Department at the Indian Institute of Technology Delhi or IIT Delhi. The work that I am going to present today is my intern work at Robert Bosch and it's titled Exploring the Role of Input and Output Layers of a Deep Neural Network in Adversarial Defense. My guides for this project were Dr. Rahul Dube and Dr. Vijay Ran from Robert Bosch. So from this title, uh, we get that it's something about adversarial defense, but a defense is always against an attack. So let's have a look at adversarial attack first. The image on the left shows a panda and we all will agree that it is a panda. And the model also says that it's a panda with a high amount of confidence. But when we introduce certain noise to this, we get the image on the right. And if I again ask you what it is, we will still say that it's a panda. But the same model now says that it's a gibbon with a very high confidence. This work was done by Zigeti et al. And after his paper in 2013, there was a lot of research in adversarial attack as well as adversarial defense. So let's see what are the existing attacks and defenses. So attacks can be classified roughly into four categories. Gradient-based attacks require the model information, like gradient of the loss with respect to the weights. And then they generate the attack. Score-based attacks require the logits or the output of the softmax layer and the approximate gradients from it to generate the attack. Transfer-based attacks require an ensemble of different attacks for fooling the model. Whereas decision-based attacks are a modern class of attacks which require nothing but the input image and the decision of the model. That is which class the image belongs to. So this attack is more dangerous because even if the attacker does not have any model information, he or she can still successfully generate the attack. An example of this is boundary attack. In our work, we mainly focus on decision-based attacks like boundary attack and score-based attacks like single pixel attack and noise attacks. Now for the recent defenses, local intrinsic dimensionality or LID suggests that for an adversarial image, its dimensionality is more compared to the normal or noisy images in its neighborhood. Ensemble adversarial training keeps a lot of adversarial images in the training loop itself. Color bit reduction and total variance minimization are pre-processing techniques that, have, uh, that are shown to uh, properly resist certain attacks. And our work is very similar to these two because in our work also we modify the input and the output layers. So let me show you how a boundary attack looks like. On the left is an image of zero and in the middle is also an image of zero, but it's a boundary attack on the left one. And the model which predicts the left image as zero with very high confidence is completely misled into believing that the middle image is a two. This attack is the boundary attack and you can see the actual pixels that the attack changes on the right. Similarly, Single pixel attacks change, as the name suggests, a single pixel. And the model is still fooled into believing that the middle image is a 3 instead of a 5. Noise attacks add certain amount of noise to it in a particular probability distribution. This is an example of Gaussian noise attack, but it can also be uniform distribution. And just like the previous examples, the middle one is misclassified as 3 instead of a 0. So let us talk about our approach. So we use three kinds of techniques. The first one is IBOL and it's a modification over input space. So we add a binarization layer in the input. That is for each of the images, we binarize it before passing it to the model. In the second approach or INOI, we replace the softmax layer in the end with a recall layer. Now recall layer is simply a dense layer with the number of units equal to the input image size. And then the final classification is done using an L2 distance from representative images. Now let me uh, explain it with an example of the MNIST dataset. So MNIST datasets uh, have a 784 dimensional image. So the image is 784 pixels in total. And the model is made such that the final layer is not a softmax layer that outputs 10 numbers for the 10 um, digits, but it outputs 784 numbers or an image itself. 
and we have predefined certain images to be the representative images for all the digits. So number zero has its own representative image, number one has its own representative image, or nine. And the output of the model is compared against each of these images using the L2 distance. And the image which has the least L2 distance is the answer, is the final label. I will show an example in the next slide graphically. The final model IBOI is a combination of the above two. That is, it has a binarization layer as the input and a recall layer as the output. So here is the classification versus recall uh, image. So as you can see on the top, there is an image of nine. And for a classification task, we generate 10 numbers representing each of the digits. And the last number that is 0.918 is the highest. And that represents that this image has the highest probability of being a nine. In the record task, we are actually trying to learn uh, an image generation problem, or we are trying to train the model to output an image from an input image. And from the input image of nine, we are getting an image which is very similar to the representative image of nine. Now, when we take the L2 distance of this from each of our representative images from zero to nine, this image is closest L2 distance wise to the representative image of nine and hence we classify the above image as nine. Now for evaluation, we need a single number, right? To evaluate between models or to evaluate amidst models, we need a single number. And for that, we define resistance as our metric. Now resistance is the fraction of failed attack attacks on a data set. We use the Python module full box for generating adversarial images. Now let me give an example of a boundary attack. So let's say I'm having an image and a model, and then I use full box to generate uh, an adversarial image using the boundary attack. Now, if the model is properly trained, the full box will not be able to identify an image which misleads the model. And that is a case of failed attack. We add all such failed attacks and divide by the size of the data set and thus we have the quantity, a single quantity resistance. And we get really good results using our three models. So as you can see in this table, for all the four attacks, one of our models, IBOL, INOI, or IBOI, performs the best. In fact, for boundary attack, each of the three models has a resistance greater than or equal to 0.93. Note the contrast between color bit reduction and total variance minimization, which are also similar techniques in the sense that they modify the input layer. And uh, compared to these techniques, which are uh, completely undermined by the modern attacks, our technique is having a, a great resistance. So let's have a look at the insights or why this actually works. So binarization or input modification reduces the feature complexity. That is, it brings down the feature size from let's say zero to 255 as the intensity for each pixel to zero and one. So when I add noise to it in noisy attacks, then that noise is also binarized. And so only the pixels which are close to the threshold matter. And only th that will change the pixel from white to black. But uh, when I binarize it, the uh, attack is more difficult. And hence the full box must change a lot of pixels by a bigger amount to actually generate the attack, to actually fool the model. And in that process, it takes away the core of the adversarial attack. As you can see in the image on the top, the image on the right can easily be seen as being tampered with. There is a lot of noise and hence it takes away the fact that it cannot be perceived as different by humans. Recall or the output modification does quite the opposite. It increases the feature complexity of the output space. So from 10 dimensional to 784 dimensional in the case of MNIST dataset. And then we take the L2 distance. So a single pixel, as in the case of single pixel attack, does not matter much in the calculation of the L2 distance. Hence, the impact of single pixel attacks decreases. Also, boundary attacks work in a way that they start from an adversarial image and then they change it uh, so that 
the image becomes quite similar to the input image so that humans can perceive it but since we are using the l2 distance for classification in the recall method this also helps in reducing the boundary attacks and this can be seen easily in this table where each of the models ibol inoi and iboi shows a higher resistant resistance against boundary attacks for the future work we have identified two major types of uh, issues one is choosing a representative image so i talked about how we have a predefined set of representative images for each label but i never talked about how they are chosen so currently they are chosen randomly as simple as that but there must be some better way to choose a representative image of course uh, we cannot take the one with the least l2 distance or something like that because it's a loop so a representative image is required for calculating the l2 distance so there must be some predefined way of uh, choosing a representative image then the second and the more uh, problematic issue is the extension to general data sets now architecture wise it's very easy so you just need to replace the softmax layer with the dense layer however this has an inherent assumption that the images of the same class should be of the same type so a digit 9 appears as a digit 9 with very little structural modifications but if you take it to cfar or imagenet and if you take the label dog then a german shepherd and a terrier are both dogs but they are structurally very different and so a, a representative image for german shepherd won't work for a terrier i'm not saying it can't be done uh, there must be a way where uh, there are multiple representative images for the same label so it can be done but we leave it as a part of future work so in conclusion what we saw in this paper what we contributed was that we explored binarization and recall as an effective technique for adversarial defense and these are simple techniques since these uh, only modify the input and the output and they can be uh, added as an attachment to pre existing models we compared them with similar techniques such as uh, color width reduction and we found that our model performs better uh, much better with respect to modern day attacks like boundary attacks we also gave a point of for further research in this field which was uh, covered in the future work i would like to acknowledge robert bosch india for giving me the opportunity to intern with him i am also grateful for the organizers of this conference for giving me a platform to actually present my work in this uh, difficult situation of covid so with that i would like to welcome any questions that Uh, you have and i would be happy to answer them thanks thanks a lot